Today is Tuesday, August 9th, 2022. It is also day um, 183 of Blender, and today I'm going to do another geometry node text animation. So I'm going to go up here, scroll down, go to geometry nodes, I'll hide the spreadsheet, zoom in a bit, click on new for a new geometry node system, and then I'll disconnect the input from the output, and then I'll do shift A and add a string to curves node. And then I'll connect that to the geometry for the output so I could actually see it in the layout, but I don't see it yet because I don't have anything set as my string. Um, so today I'm just going to do Blender, and I'll be able to see that on my viewport now. And um, I want it to be standing, so I'll do Shift A and add a Transform node, and make sure that it rotates 90 degrees along the X axis, which in this case is the red axis. Right, so at this point I'm going to add some faces to the letters, so I'll do Shift A and add a Fill Curve to fill in those curves and change the fill type to n-gons and then I want to add some thickness to the letters so I'll do shift a and add an extrude mesh node and change that offset value to 0.1 but if I look at the back I notice that um, it's not filled in the back so to fix that I can do shift a and get a join geometry node and put that right in here and make sure that the fill curve node is also joined and now it's filled in the back all right for the fun part, which is the font, um, I downloaded this font from thefont.com, and it is um, by Lauren Ashpole, and it is called Space Time. So I downloaded that. I'm going to click on the folder over here. I'm going to go where I have the font downloaded or saved as in my font folder, and I believe it was this one. And now it's going to look like this, um, and it's interesting. All right. So that's that. And then there's also the fact of the material. So I'll do Shift A and get a set material node and I'll put that in here. And then I'll just select the first material that I see over here. And then I'm going to Control S to save it. And once I save it, I'm going to click on shading over here so that um, we can go to the shading workspace. And that's where I'm going to set the material. So this is what it looks like. So, so far I just have a principal BSDF and the material output. I'm going to do shift A and add a color ramp. And then I'm also going to add an object, um, an object information node. So I'll do shift A and add an object info node. I'll make sure that the random is connected to the factor of the color ramp so that the colors are randomly um, distributed right between the letters. And I'll make sure that the color is connected to the base color. Now I have this website that I use. It's called colors with, um, well, yeah, it's right here. Um, and they give you like these color palettes, which is super cool. So I'm just going to go ahead and just copy a few colors and then I'll go into here and I'll select the first tag and then I'll go to the little colored box and change the hex and just paste that color in there and I'll be able to see it. Now here's the thing. I don't want it to be a linear gradient of that color. I need it to be that color or that's it. So I'll just change it from linear to constant. Alright, and then what I'll also do is I'll copy a little bit more of the colors and see how that would end up looking like. So just click on plus and then change the, click on the box and then change the color hex to be whatever color you want. And just go ahead and put this over here, maybe move this over here. I think that personally looks really good. Okay, let me see this color. There's also that color. Um, and there's also this bluish color. I could probably change this one to be something like that. I don't think the light blue one even makes sense. Let me fix the colors and I'll be back. You know what? I think I'm going to leave it like that. I think that's fine. Okay, so that's basically the material part of this. I'm going to go back to geometry nodes and do the actual animation part. So I'll click on this and then I'll... Sh no, actually, I'll click on the layout and then I'll do shift A to add an empty sphere. I'll go to object data properties and I'll change the display to be a single arrow. And then I'm going to go back to geometry nodes and I'm going to add a shift A translate... Oops translate instances node and I'll put that in there and basically what this does it just moves the letters 
um, but they, it moves it all at the same time and in the same place and I don't want that. So what I'll do is I'm going to drag in the empty from the outliner into the um, geometry node system and that's going to give me the object information node of the empty. So what I'll do is I'll take the distance, I'll get vector math node and change this to distance and I'll take the distance between the empty and also the position of each letter and that distance, that value is going to end up being um, the value that each of the letters move. So now they're going to translate, right? As you can see, they move um, in accordance to the distance they have from the empty. Okay, and then let's see. Um, I want them to move on the Y axis, so like up and down. So I'll do Shift A and get a combine XYZ node and put that in here and make sure that's connected to the Y and not the X. All right, so you can see that it's working that way. Now here's another problem. I noticed that the closer the empty is to a letter, the lower the letter is, and the farther the empty is from a letter like R, the higher it is. And I want the opposite to happen because as I go through, as the empty goes through the letters, I want the letters to go up, right? And that's not going to happen if, if as the empty goes closer to a letter, it just stays down, right? So what I'll do is I'll go here and do Shift A and add a color ramp, and then I'll put that in here before the X Y Z combine X Y Z, and I'll make sure to go to the little arrow over here and flip the color ramp and now it's going to be really nice to look at so you can see that happening here it's going up and down all right escape and now um if i move at a constant speed throughout the letters i notice that there's they're, they're just going at the same speed um but i want them to kind of be a little different so i'll do shift and put a float curve in there and i'll just kind of maybe move this a little bit like this and what that's going to do is going to make the letters basically go start really fast go up really fast slow down at the top and then come down really fast um so yeah and then that's pretty much it for the animation part in the geometry nodes um now onto the actual rendering part so if i go to layout and i can just maybe put my timeline a little bit up press on end to put up my end panel i'm just going to have a video of 80 frames and so i'm going to make sure my end is 80 right and then i'm going to do g and x and move it right before it starts affecting the letter b so that's kind of right about here um and for me that's negative um 1.4889 meters and so i'm going to hover over at that location on the end panel and i'm going to press i to insert a location keyframe which is going to pop up as a yellow diamond on my timeline and then I'm going to go to keyframe 80, which is by the end of the video. And logically, by the end of the video, I want my empty, my controller, to be all the way at the end of the word. And that's right after it stops affecting the letter R, which is kind of right about here. For me, it's 4.5696 meters. So I'm going to hover over that location, press I. And now if I play, it's just going to go through the whole word um, like so. All right. It's going super slow today for some reason. But yeah. Um, so let me click escape and now um, I'm just going to do control S real quick to save and I'm going to pull up the render preview. Alright, so this is what it's looking like in the rendered preview. So here I obviously want a backdrop. Um, so I'll do shift A and add mesh and I'll go and add a plane. I'll press S to scale, G to grab, did I just delete it? Okay, G to grab and then X to grab along the X axis and then I'll go to edit mode by pressing on tab and then edge select and then I'm going to select the back edge and then press E to extrude the mesh or the edge, excuse me, and then Z to go um, to kind of extrude it along the Z axis, which is the blue axis. And then I'm going to go back into object mode and I'll go here to modifiers and add a bevel modifier, which you can find under the generate column. Increase the amount, increase the segments, and that kind of makes a backdrop. I apply it, and then I do right-click Shade Smooth, and then I'm just going to pull this timeline down. All right, and then what I'll do is I'll set up my camera view now, and also maybe just pull this down a little bit by pressing GZ and kind of doing that. All right, and then I'll do front view by pressing the button under the escape key and hovering over front, kind of moving this a little bit down, and then doing Control alt numpad 0. If that doesn't work, go to Edit preferences, go to input and make sure emulate numpad is on. If it still doesn't work, then go to shift A and add a camera because that probably means you don't have a camera. Um, okay, and then this is basically aligning my camera to the view and obviously I'm going to have to make this a little bit larger so I'll press S and then Y to scale it, oops, I mean X to scale it along the X axis and then just um, move it a little bit more to the top. So to get out of this view, you press the middle mouse button. To go back into the view, you press on zero. But I'm just going to move the camera a little bit more to the top, so I'll do something like that, and even a little bit more up, 
backwards, something like that. Okay. Um, and even more to the right would be good as well. And I think that's a little, that's much better. All right. And then I can also go ahead and change the background color of the backdrop. So I'll go to material properties, click on new and go to the base color. And let me see if I could find a nice color. Okay, so I decided that I'm going to actually change the lighting before I take a background color, although I kind of tested this one out, but I just want to change the lighting a little bit. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to make sure it's a sun, and I'll change the strength to be 3, and then I'll go ahead and do G to grab it along the y-axis, and then rotate it so that it's kind of hitting the colors a little bit better. 0 to go back to the view, and now it's looking like a little bit better right here. So then, now I'm going to try out some colors. Okay, so I personally think that it looks a lot better and it stands out really nicely with just kind of like an, a white color. So I did F-F-E-A-E-E. -E -E. That's the hex code for that. I'm going to go with that and now I'm just going to go to Output Properties and then I'm going to click on the folder in the Output section and just create a folder um, somewhere here. Go to Blender, create a folder and I'll call it um, 8922. And I'll save that over here and accept and I'll make sure that the file format is PNG and that's basically I'm going to click on render, render animation and that's basically to render all of my frames, um, all of my 80 frames as PNG images in that folder. Alright, so now that I go to the folder, I see that all of the frames are rendered in that folder so I'm just going to X out of here and then I'm just going to go to... Um, to the top and then I'm going to scroll down go to video editing video editing after clicking the plus sign scroll this all the way to the left and then I'm going to click on add image sequence and then I'm going to go to that folder that I just put um, those images into blender and then today's date and then I'm going to select the first one and then scroll all the way down shift select the last one add image strip and then you can see that it's just being put all together like this and it's pretty cool um, okay, and then at this point you go to output properties, which you should already be there, and then I'll go to output and create a new folder for my video to render, and I'll just create a new folder, click on accept, and then change the format to be FFmpeg video encoding container mpeg4, and the output quality, high quality, and that's all there is to it to rendering the video, control S to save, go to render, render animation, and you'll be able to see the video in that folder as an output in a few seconds. All right, um, and this is the final result once I, okay, I guess, let me get it up, okay. Um, this is the final result, I just had to get it on the screen. Um, I basically went to the folder that I told it to render into, and I clicked on it, and that's it. So, this is it, pretty cute. All right then, bye.